This video is meant to describe or to help or complement the documentation for those who have QRock and are happy with QRock running on the cloud, their instance of QReader, but they have an Azure environment that has grown so much that the best option is to put a data gateway in the same way that you do a data gateway uh, on-prem but let's say that you want to do a connection between a data gateway on Azure itself connected to QRock. That's what this video is uh, all about. This process is complex. Not only Azure has some security implications and protection that you need to have, the same thing with soft, soft layer, QRock on top of soft layer, and then you are in your company here on a browser interacting with both uh, QRock and doing all the installation from your browser. So, couple of caveats uh, that you need to follow. And, and by the way, this is the same, or this very similar, to the steps that you will need to follow to deploy on Azure an event collector, a flow collector, an event processor, flow processor, or data node that you want it to talk to your uh, QROC. So, couple of uh, caveats, uh, warnings, or points to be kept in mind. This is not a snap process. This takes a while, between two and four hours. And there is a token that you need to acquire uh, to complete the process. So, by the time that you apply for the token and you get it, it may be the next day or, I don't know, the the the. the the time frame that you will get that. Also, there are two passwords involved in this installation. Okay. One is the SSH password, the one that you will use to log from here, from this browser into that instance. And for that, it's like, is the user password. In my case, you'll see that as tester DG, right? And, you know, it's also referred to the one that you use when you are creating the instance of the data gateway at, in Azure, okay? So, the other password is the root, what is called the root password. And this is the one that is used to attach to the console. Now, the documentation, and I'm going to put a link to that documentation in the video description, calls for, you know, at least five characters, no spaces, no special characters, anyone that you do shift and the numbers on a, on a US keyboard, uh, none of those. Therefore, uh, you need to, to make it very strong. Five, I wouldn't use five characters at all. I would put something much, much, much stronger than that. Also, because you do not or cannot, if you change that password before you make the complete the installation, you're going to screw things up and we'll have to start from the beginning and request a new token and all that. So it's going to be a mess. So, so to reduce the need to change the password, make it very strong. Okay. Uh, you should have different passwords for these two. You can simplify yourself by having the same one. If you're going to do that, make it very strong. This stuff is publicly exposed. Therefore, you be you have to be extra careful. You don't have your normal protection that you have when you are in the environment. If you, once you deploy your first one, if you're going to be deploy another gateways, each one obviously has to have a unique name. Okay. Uh, you also need to do the configuration in Azure to allow port 443 to be open because that's what is going to be used to connect those two uh, devices. Now, we'll see in, during the installation process that you need to make sure that your IP that is public, and this is quite common, but also the IP that is private need to be static. They cannot change because the token is going to be associated to those two IPs. More, you know, kind of a warning. And of course, you need to have this public IP whitelisted, right? Uh, 
there's going to be a process, and I'll show that during installation, in which the QROC will ask for a deploy changes type of screen. Do not deploy the changes. This process automatically does that. In fact, if you have multiple operators in QROC, make sure you tell them, if you see a deploy changes while I'm doing this, don't, don't do it. Because if you do that, you're going to uh, screw up the process and need to start again. So let me start by showing you, do, showing you the documentation. Uh, again, the link is on the video description. And my friend Sri was uh, kind enough to be with me over on, on this process. So I want to pass along the tips uh, she gave me. First thing you need to do is go to this link by simply clicking here in the documentation. And that takes you to this page. You click in here, get it now. And when you click create, you are presented with this menu in which you need to put your uh, research group. I created one. The virtual machine name, again, this one cannot be curator. It has to be unique for every uh, gateway. The, as the documentation calls for, you need to review what are the requirements of the data gateway. In this case, I'm going to keep things simple. I'm going to take the default. You should not do that. Also, you need to log in with either password or public key. This is the user ID and password that I that I use. And when you you know put that in there, it asks you to to put that password. Again, make it strong far stronger than what is required. I also have made several videos that show how you do login with SSH keys. So you can go to my channel and look for those as well. So that covers up to this step D there, right? Then you need to click on next for the disk. I took all the defaults and then you get to networking. And as you see, I'm, I'm putting screenshots of when I did this process. So it is uh, more, uh, it's easier for you to follow along. Then instead of doing the network configuration in here, I went ahead and did the creation and then went and, and made uh, the changes because you can actually change those after you create it. When you uh, click on create at around nine to 10 minutes, uh, you're gonna have your uh, instant created but wait there's plenty more to go now we need to change the ips to static both the private and the public as i said before one thing that is important the private address has to be anything but 192.168.0.0.16 that segment uh that see that ranges again 192.168.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
and then it connected it asked me yes because it's the first time uh, and then you need to run this command to basically this is what tells a generic uh, QRadar appliance to become a data gateway which is the 7000 so you run that and then this process begin it takes a while and then here is where you need to specify that root password okay now remember I mentioned that you need to get a token for this to connect you need to open a ticket and get the people from QRock to generate that token for you and for that you need to have that public IP and private IP that are now static and now you understand if these things were to change the token will be useless uh, and you also need to have the domain of the uh, of your uh, QRock installation so I pasted both uh, well actually this is the the once I received the token but I, what I want to show you here because uh, I need to enter the token I received the token already but what I did is I paste the token here and also the domain of my QRock and this is my demo system so I, I went to the URL that removed the HTTPS and the stuff that comes after and so that's the fully qualified name uh, and you'll see that you'll need to enter these two very soon but there is an extra step you need to do which is patch that image and in the documentation for the current version of QRock, which is at patch level 6 you just need to click on this link and download that image you can download it straight into the Azure environment or you can do it on your local machine I did it on my local machine and what you need to make sure because this documentation is going to change I'm sure that QRock will go to patch 7 or 732 whatever it is and I'm going to show you how you make sure that you download the right image notice that in this particular case this is pointing to uh, uh, an SFS file for the patch that ends in 1210 right if I go to my curator QRock console and click and fortunately this is below the area I'm recording but if you scroll down here you'll see an area that say that reads about when you click in there you see that that's the patch level and that's what you see this also ends in 1210 so that's the version you need to uh, download okay just to make sure that if this thing changes you are not going to th be thrown out so after you download that patch and that can easily take 20 minutes or depends on your network speed and all that uh, if you move it to the Azure you need to do that sudo to move it uh, here I downloaded it into my local system so I use FileZilla login into the SS into the uh, instance and the the, the traffic with FileZilla once you are there this is the same stuff that you do when you are patching curator you need to make sure that the media updates directory gets created if it's there it will tell you so and then you need to issue this command mount dash o loop that's t squash hfs store tem is where you move that curator image is the best place the place that normally has the most space for that and then you're mounting that as media update then you from the media updates directory you run installer okay and this process is gonna take a while I don't know easily 30 minutes or more so plan accordingly once that patch is uh, completed you need to issue this command which is gonna invoke the the part in which you will be putting what is that token that you were given and what is the fully qualified name of your machine of your QRock instance and this is a view of that part in which you know you put those two commands and click next then after a while it asks you to enter the gateway host password at this point is when 
anyone who is looking at the curator console will see you know there are on deploy changes and then the natural instinct will be click deploy changes don't do that if you do that you have screw up all the process make sure that other as i said before other q rock operators uh, SOC people will not click on that uh, deploy changes be patient and let that process complete so after you know again 30 40 minutes or so you end up to this deployment was successful i was actually thrown out with failed due to error but notice that between the brackets there's there's nothing there so there, there was no error uh, so deploy completed bingo you are good to go the deploy changes on the q rock console automatically disappears in fact this process actually deploys that change and you will be getting logs into if you go to uh, network activity coding that i did of my uh, installation after it's finished and actually you see that the the, the source ip is that 10.0.9.4 that is actually coming from uh, the data gateway so that is the the objective any other logs that the data gateway is actually gathering should be hitting now your curator console 